The winter passed harshly, and Bevan had spent it amongst the few and scattered homes of Quebec. It probably wouldn't be the last time he saw the town, but certainly he would not spend that long a time in it again. The Crown, of course, was interested in fur trade, and there would be some furs to trade, but Bevan had not come all this way to sit around town with these others. He intended to not be found again. The offer of the French seemed the best way to accomplish this, even if it meant swearing fealty to the French throne in the Catholic Church, so be it. He had little use for either kings or priests in any case, so it hardly mattered which one he was intending to ignore. When the spring sun crested over the land for the first time, he was off with hardly a goodbye to those he had met over the last season. He would follow the river, of course. The trick was finding out where to stop. There were few in the frontier, but there would be more. And like Bevan before them, they would follow the river until they found a spot they wished to claim as their own. And they would. And Bevan didn't want to be found surrounded by others in a decade or two. The journey took several days, the small river climbing through a warming land, the water swelling as the snows melted off. At last he came to a place where the land dipped and the banks expanded into a small lake. He licked his lips as he examined the place. Not bad. Fishing would be good. Plenty of trees he would never want for wood. Another week he spent there surveying the land and making sure he would be alone. And then he started to build. It would be a hard year, building a home while hunting and fishing enough to feed himself. But he was not concerned about doing hard work. The long journey to the new world normally weakened passengers, but he had asked to work as one of the crew, an offer that of course had been accepted. He would not go into this land soft. For a year he did not see another person, but the warm cabin was made well before the snows came, and it was made well. His supplies were holding out and he had shelter for the winter. It was all he needed. When the snows came, he started his next project a canoe to help him travel the river. Spring came again, and the lake swelled with the melting snow. He was gathering skins and food for the journey to head back to Quebec. He had collected enough to get tools and supplies for the year, perhaps even a mule or something. He would see. No need to be greedy. There was plenty of time. He had already put several skins in the canoe and had gone back inside the shed to fetch more when something caught his eye. Bevan turned back to the lake. There was something there. A woman of black hair, sitting on a rock beside the bank. Her hair was covering her shoulders and then continued down over the rock and back into the lake itself. Who are you? Bevan demanded, searching his memory for where he had left his rifle. He had had it only a moment before as he was loading, but... Oh shit, it was in the canoe. She turned again, her face mostly hidden in hair, but her milk-white skin and a green piercing eye were visible. There was a wry smile on her face. She tilted her head then, cooing. I knew there would be someone on this river if I kept traveling. I wondered then who it would be, and what would be done once we had found each other. Where are you going? Bevan asked, stepping forward as if being lulled in by the spell. I don't know, she admitted. Bevan realized then that while her hair was covering her, she did not have clothes on underneath. His mind began to dart then, but the overriding factor in it was concern. The snows were melting, but it was still very cold. You must be freezing. Let me get you a blanket. No need. He stopped and licked his lips. Where are you from? Nowhere I can get back to right now. She stood and came forward to him, the hair dragging out of the water, but never actually coming out of it. It was as if she were connected there, because her hair never left contact with the icy lake. I heard stories of your kind, he said, wondering why he wasn't running, and decided it was either witchcraft or curiosity. Me grands told me stories of the Kragathanun. Never thought much on it, but I remember enough. You are from the other place. She smiled at him, 
Something like that. But the way is blocked now, and I fear I'm stuck until the door is opened again. He shook his head. How is it opened again? She was near to him now and touched his hand with her own. She was cold, but otherwise felt real enough. Her eyes were hypnotic, and they never left his. You can help me get there, if you would like. He knew he might not like that at all, but the pleading in her eyes left him no choice. What is your name? What would you like to call me? He thought on this, and knew an old name that might work for someone so tied to the water. Morgan. I will call you Morgan.